Hey everybody, welcome back to The Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. I hope you're doing well, and if you're not, I hope you are soon. Okay, today on The Dungeon Dive, we're going to do a little uh, beginner's guide to solo role-playing. The beginner's guide to solo RPGs. I've had a few people express interest in a video like this. I've had some questions on The Dungeon Dive Facebook group about uh, what you need to get into solo role-playing. And so I thought I would do a video on this topic, especially geared towards the beginner. The reason why is because there are so many different factors that go into um, discovering a solo RPG and one that fits into the kind of game, the kind of experience that you are looking for. Uh, there are different ways to approach the concept. There are different styles of games within that concept. And they run the gamut from, uh, from one end of a spectrum to the other end of a spectrum. And there are various spectrums to talk about when we are talking about solo role-playing. So what I have done is I've actually created a few spectrums here with some keywords to kind of differentiate the different kinds of solo role-playing. And so what we're gonna do is on my table here, I have some examples that we're going to talk through. And then we're going to look how they, we're going to examine how they fit into these, the, these keywords that I have, that I have uh, selected. Now, I'm not saying that all games will fit perfectly into these, uh, these concepts, these buckets. Uh, some games will fit into multiple um, buckets and uh, some games will kind of, we will kind of have to like shove into a bucket to get it to fit. But I think these are a really good way to just think about the different concepts and you will find that you will gravita gravitate uh, towards one rather than another. Uh, maybe you will have certain preferences and you can find the game, find the style of solo role playing that fits into your preferences given the various moods that you might be in. So uh, the first uh, spectrum here, the first two, I have opposing words. So we have scripted. And uh, scripted, I'm using to mean low effort and light role playing. So these are more like kind of like choose your own adventure style games. And then opposite of that would be a sandbox style game. So these would be, they take a lot more effort on part of the player, but there is more role playing. There's more freedom for you to do what you want as compared to scripted where there isn't a lot of player freedom. So those are at uh, two opposite ends of one spectrum. Next up, we have a thing that I'm calling systems. And systems would be all-in-one games made for solo role play. Uh, these are games that have everything you need in, in, in one collection. You don't need to go outside of that game system to find what you need to play solo. Opposite of that would be something call I'm calling tools. And tools would be things or, or overlays to help facilitate solo play. So these, you could take a system that you like, maybe something like D&D 5, uh, 5e, and then you could add an overlay. You could add something on top of that in order to turn D&D 5e into a solo game. Next up, we have uh, two very simple ones. I'm simple there. So um, one idea would be something that is simple, something that is low effort. Uh, light on the rules, something that is very easy to get into. And then, of course, the opposite of that would be something that is complex, things that take a lot of work to get into. And then finally here, we have uh, what I'm calling journaling. So these would be journaling games. And these are games that are more like creative writing exercises. These would be games that give you a prompt, very usually very light on the rules. They give you something to think about and you write a little story, you write a little snippet about your character and how they would react to a given situation. And then on the opposite end of that, I'm calling this structured play. And these are things more like board games. And a lot of the board games that we like on the Dungeon Dive are at least solo RPG adjacent. And I think structured play is an actually, it 
probably a pretty easy avenue to go down to get into a more traditional solo role playing. You know, games like Folklore the Affliction or Explore It or even some things like Shadows of Brimstone. Um, even like uh, Sleeping Gods, some of these uh, board games do brush up against the um, so the solo RPG genre. So we're going to be taking a look at these and comparing them, contrasting them, and talking about how the various examples that I have chosen fit in to these ideas. Okay, let's start off very easy. So let's start off with something that is simple and scripted. So these would be things that are very easy to get into, uh, things that kind of guide you along and they are light on role playing, but they still have some of those ideas. And probably the easiest one, the easiest kind of thing to get into for this would be various game books. And even these game books could exist on different spots on this spectrum. Some are more tightly scripted like uh, uh, Fighting Fantasy, Warlock on Firetop Mountain. Uh, some are less scripted, a little more sandboxy in how you approach the game, something like Fabled Lands. Uh, some are very simple, like Warlock on Firetop Mountain. And some might be a little more complex, like uh, with something like uh, Storm Weavers here, which introduces some elements of tactical fighting while you are working through a game book scenario. And then there are also things like Destiny Quest, which Des Destiny Quest probably fits somewhere in between something like Fabled Lands and Warlock and Firetop Mountain in that it is a little more scripted than uh, a fighting fantasy book, but it is also a little more of a sandbox like Fabled Lands. So these kinds of games are very easy to get into. They can introduce you into some concepts such as making choices, uh, introduce you into concepts of keeping a character and using a character, uh, progressing a character, keeping track of things like hit points and inventory. And uh, these were, uh, like many of us, these were our introduction into this much wider um, genre of, of solo gaming, whether it be solo role playing or solo board games. Okay, so coming up next after game books, I would start to look at some things that are maybe a little more complex than game books and things that are more like kind of self-contained systems still. And some of these are still uh, scripted, but some of them are also more sandbox in nature. But these are all games where um, they are systems, they are self-contained in that you don't need other things to play them. And some of examples of uh, games like that would be something like Rad Zone, which is a post-apocalyptic uh, simulation game where you are playing as a group of survivors and you are going out into the world, searching for materials, searching for um, things to help you survive. And it is a complete system. It has all the rules and everything. All you need to play is like this book basically and some printed paper. Um, some printed sheets on paper, maybe a couple dice. And of course, coming up uh, right along with that is the Four Against Darkness series. I've done a lot of videos on Four Against Darkness. This starts to move more into the realms of kind of old school Dungeons and Dragons, just really uh, meat and potatoes kind of dungeon crawling. But it also is a little more complex, quite a bit more complex than something like a fighting fantasy book or a choose your own adventure. You're going to be rolling more dice. You're going to be looking up more things on more tables. You're going to be keeping track of more stats and you're going to be uh, keeping track of your character's progress longer, which is something that a lot of us, you know, it, it's one of the main things that many of us enjoy about a role playing game. And that is just keeping our characters from one game to the next and connecting the dots of our characters' survival as we pit them against more and more dangerous ideas, more and more dangerous circumstances. And then there is also Alone Against Fear, which Alone Against Fear is kind of like the horror version of Four Against Darkness, but as the name suggests, you are only playing one character, not four. And so this is even, uh, this is like a lone wolf solo RPG where you are lone wolfing it. You are taking one character into the game, but very similar. You will be uh, continuing to progress that character through game after game as you are trying to survive in a horror themed um, environment. 
And then I think one level up from four against darkness and uh, alone against fear is the D100 dungeon series. Uh, I really enjoy this series and I think it kind of breaches into the solo RPG realm once you start adding in this D100 dungeon world builder. And at that point, it does start to become more of a sandbox game because at that point you will be um, working within this hex map. You will be creating the world that you are playing in while you are playing. And you will have many more options from one game to the next. You won't be just kind of going down a, 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 a selected path. Your path is now an entire hex map. And you can go in a variety of different directions to explore the sandbox in which you are playing. Also, we could take a look at a game like Marching Order. Marching Order is a pretty good combination of a choose your own adventure scripted narrative along with an RPG. So I would say um, this is definitely a systems game because everything you need is in one book. It is uh, scripted and it is a little more complex than a choose your own adventure. And it does have a very, uh, it does have structured play kind of like a board game. And so in this game, you are taking a party of characters into a dungeon. You're going to be keeping that party of characters from one game to the next, building upon your stable of characters. And then when you start moving through the dungeons, that's when the game turns into a little bit more of, an, of a um, choose your own adventure because the dungeon is scripted and you will have these scripted adventures while you are uh, utilizing their characters' powers and fighting and getting loot and all that kind of stuff. So some of also um, some of the Four Against Darkness uh, series does also have scripted adventures that you can purchase. And these scripted adventures are more like choose your own adventures where you will be reading through a book and the, 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 and the entire adventure is, has a beginning, middle and end. Or you can also play Four Against Darkness a little more like a sandbox game, but not quite as much as D100 Dungeon. And that is until they do release like a more open map exploration version of Four Against Darkness with uh, with towns and, and, and travel events and that kind of thing, which I have heard they are doing. The next step, I think if you wanted to take that concept one step further, you could look at something like The Drifter, a Wild West adventure, which is a Wild West themed kind of re-theming, a remake of uh, Barbarian Prince. And this is a much more complex game than any of the ones that we've looked at so far. It has a large hex map that you will explore. It has a character sheet. You have to keep track of a variety of different things on a variety of different character sheets. And then you go through these uh, this large book, moving from hex to hex, having different adventures. Uh, the Drifter and... Uh, Barbarian Prince are your kind of prototypical hex crawls. They feel a little bit more like sandboxes, but things are still kind of scripted depending on which hex you go into. I will say, though, that they also have structured play. They feel kind of like a board game. You know, you could uh, these are tangentially related to something like Runebound, where you are going to be moving on a map. You're going to be keeping track of where you are. They don't have a ton of role playing. It's more, uh, you're, you're more keeping track of, of, of stats and you aren't really journaling. So it is more of a structured play. And I will say that this is a little bit more on the complex side as we move away from more traditional scripted adventures or scripted games like Four Against Darkness or like um, the Four Against Darkness modules that are scripted or fighting fantasy or more game book style things. Okay, now let's start looking at things that are more traditional role-playing games, more traditional solo role-playing games. We're moving away right now from scripted adventures. We are moving uh, more towards something that is like a sandbox. We are moving more towards into things that can be systems, and, but you can also have tools and overlays. And I think we are moving somewhere in between simple and complex as we go through this, uh, through this stack here. So one of my favorite uh, games is Morkborg. And one of the reasons why I like Morkborg so much is that it is super simple. 
Uh, the, all of the rules can basically fit on one page. It has a really cool theme. It's very kind of like dark and gritty, but it also has a wicked sense of humor. I've done a lot of videos on Morkborg and I've talked a lot about why I like that. So I'm not going to retread that. But with Morkborg, with its simple rules system, it is very easy to add the tools that you need in order to turn Morkborg into a solo game. And I think it does actually have one of the best tool systems for that. And that is Solitary Defilement. So we have Solitary Defilement and Alone in the Crowd. These two books come together. Uh, you can't get the physical books anymore, but you can get the uh, PDF. And this adds a uh, an overlay system to Morkborg that turns it into a 100% solo game or a co-op game. And I love this system together. It uses an Oracle system. So an Oracle system is something very easy where you ask questions, yes or no questions, and then you get various degrees of answers. And based on those answers of yes, uh, yes and, or no and no but, or um, uh, some other forms of those answers, then those prompt you to continue playing your adventure down certain paths. They are a little more effort. The, uh, something like this takes more effort than a fully scripted or more simple uh, uh, full system because you do need to respond to those prompts with your own creativity. You are not going to be given options of, you know, talking to the man or killing the man. You might say, hey, does this man have what I need? And you'll roll some dice and look up some charts and maybe he does. Okay, so then it's up to you. It's up to your character to role play how you would get what you need from that man. You know, you're not going to be giving, you're not going to be given, uh, choose one, two, or three of the, uh, uh, one option out of these three. The options really are limitless, but that's where the role playing comes in. And that's where you're going to have to start thinking in terms of how your character or characters would react to the situations that they are in. Baratory is another Morkborg supplement that just adds more tools to that overlay system and it adds more options for you as a solo player. Okay, next up, we have something that could be considered some kind of a hybrid between a number of different things. So we have a very simple game like uh, Cairn here. Cairn is a very simple, kind of a very, very rules light game. The entire system comes in at what, 20 something pages? Yeah, about 20 pages. And uh, with this is not a solo game, but what a lot of indie designers have started doing is they are taking these simple kind of indie small little RPG games and they are adding tools on top like Morkborg, but they are adding these modules that you can play with these simple rules that turn these simple rules into a solo game. And one example here is Escape the City, which takes the rules from Cairn or D&D 5e, and then you play a uh, somewhat scripted adventure where you are going to be uh, drawing cards in order to trigger different prompts in order for you to respond to and keep track of where you are going in this city. This is a big city crawl. So this uh, game doesn't require it, but it is made better by using, by journaling, by just writing down simple prompts, simple things that your character is doing. And then you can go back and you can uh, review your story to see how it has progressed. Now, one thing that Escape the City does use, and it's a very powerful tool that a lot of uh, solo games use, and that is a standard deck of playing cards. A standard deck of playing cards can be a very, very powerful tool for you to use to create your own charts, uh, even to do some like some very easy divination, like, okay, uh, you know, red, red is good, white is uh, bad that kind of thing. Or you could look up numbers. You could use, uh, you could come up with ways to use a deck of cards as a tool to facilitate your solo games. And a lot of games do use decks of cards and they mainly use them to look up certain things on charts. When you draw cards that will give you your uh, certain kinds of, of encounters or NPCs or events that you will uh, come across. And then we also have these more simple kind of indie style games that are definitely in the journaling genre. They are simple. 
They are somewhat scripted and they also have structured play. So here we have like a whole bunch of different keywords that uh, you could, uh, if you are into journaling and you want some more structured play, but you still want something simple and something that is a little bit scripted, you could look at things like the outcast here or a torch in the dark. There are a whole bunch of different examples of these kinds of games. Lots of them exist as print and play versions that you can get on like uh, sites like itch.io. But these are games where you are going to be usually taking a character and just kind of seeing what happens to that character as you progress through the game, usually taking a journal and writing things about that character as you are playing the game. And then with Rune Cairn here, Rune Cairn is a system. So it is a self-contained book. It has all of the rules for a standard RPG, plus it has rules to play as a solo game. It is more of a sandbox than, um, than other, uh, other similar games. And it is a little more complex than something like uh, Morkborg. At least it is for me. There's a little more to uh, Rune Cairn. Uh, it's a little more of an advanced game, I think. It's not super advanced. It's still pretty light. But there are more rules. Um, more of this book is filled with rules than fluff like Morkborg is. Morkborg is very light on the rules and very, very heavy on the theming and the, the, the flavor text. Whereas Rune Cairn seems to be a little more rules orientated, but it also has some good theming and it also has all of the rules and the charts and everything that you would need to play a complete game. So if you wanted to experience a, a game that you would only need to buy one thing for, you could get this Rune Cairn Warden Saga. And I got this from Exalted Funeral and this is still available. This would have everything you need in one book to have a complete game that you could play for a very long time. Now, if you wanted to uh, go even more complex, but still have an all-in-one system that would also have a sandbox style game, you could turn to something like Disciples of Bone and Shadow, which you can still get the PDF for. This is a very complex game, in my opinion, more complex than a lot of the style, a lot of games that I like to get into, but this is very interesting. This is an entire self-contained game and world that is a sandbox game that you can play. It's a big hex crawl. You can go out, you can start from one hex and you just kind of start building the map as you are exploring. And as you are exploring different environments and different areas, different towns, you will discover civilizations. You will discover ruins. You will discover all kinds of different things to explore. Your character can harvest different types of uh, plants and make potions. Your character can level up. There are a whole bunch of different skills. There are rules for dungeon crawling. There are rules for, uh, for wilderness crawling. Uh, a huge bestiary with all kinds of different monsters with various levels of complexity. Uh, this book really does have it all. But I would not suggest this as a as a beginner's game. I would start with something more like Rune Cairn, maybe start with something with, uh, you know, more of like D100 Dungeon and then progress into something like Disciples of Bone and Shadow. So one um, problem that a lot of these games face is that they don't actually tell you how to play the game. They give you the rules but they don't give you examples of how to implement those rules into a solo setting. And that is one problem. And uh, very, very few games actually tell you like what you are supposed to be doing when you are playing. Um, Solitary Defilement with Morkborg does have a really detailed example of play. So that is one reason why I do suggest Solitary Defilement because it's super easy to learn how to play because of that example. And another book that also has that, and it is a full self-contained system. It is a sandbox, but I would say I would lessen the complexity and I would put this more in the uh, simple category. And that is Scarlet Heroes. Scarlet Heroes is incredible. I cannot say enough good things about Scarlet Heroes. As a matter of fact, I've said a ton of good things about Scarlet Heroes on this channel already. But this does contain an example of how to play both solo and um, with another with another player, with a GM. All of the rules for Scarlet Heroes, the basic rules, can fit on a single page. 
And it also has in the back, it has a full, a full complement of rules for solo gaming right in one book. So this is a one-stop shop. This is everything that you would need to play in the world of Scarlet Heroes. So Scarlet Heroes has a very definitive, uh, a definite theming. It's kind of like this weird kind of like pan-Asian. It, it, it incorporates different mythologies from different Asian cultures into one setting. And so it's not a traditional fantasy setting, but you can easily use these rules to create a game set in a, in a traditional fantasy setting by simply adding a, another system on top of it. So I would take, if you wanted to play Scarlet Heroes, but you wanted to play in a traditional setting, what I would do is use the solo rules from Scarlet Heroes, but then take a very simple, uh, basic, you know, basic fantasy setting like White Box here and just substitute in the things that you want from White Box into the rules in Scarlet Heroes. They are 100% compatible. It's super easy to do. With Scarlet Heroes, is based off of like old school D&D. It's an OSR game. So anything that is also old school, um, you can easily substitute one for the other. So you could take all of the weird kind of exotic monsters from Scarlet Heroes and you could find the ones that you actually wanted to fight in your traditional fantasy world in White Box. And these two books, when purchased together, really are a limitless, provide a limitless amount of creativity, a limitless amount of, of, of areas to play in. Um, these would be a very, very strong recommendation for me to somebody who is ready for a next step after a scripted uh, adventure and they'd want something that's a little more traditional uh, than something like Morkborg. You have some, maybe some experience in Dungeons and Dragons and then I would definitely uh, purchase Scarlet Heroes along with White Box so you have a ton of options and how to play your game and you can have a variety of different settings and themes. So very, very a good combination right here. Okay, so now let's look at um, some things that are a little bit more um, like journaling. So these would be journaling style games. And uh, journaling style games, these are games that you are going to be, uh, you're going to be writing a lot. These are kind of like creative writing style games. They have a little more structured play, but they're also a little bit more, uh, some of them can be a little sandboxy in how you are exploring the world. Most of them are relatively simple. You are rolling dice and looking up at charts or drawing cards and looking up at charts, which is the, um, the case here with uh, Colossal. But I would say that these are, these are very light games, kind of roll and write style games. You're going to be rolling dice, drawing cards, and then writing a little adventure for your character. And one example here would be a Broken Cask, which is a game where you are an innkeeper in a fantasy setting. A very fun game. It's super fun to just to roll up on all the crazy charts and see all the crazy things that happen uh, to you as a innkeeper and to the, uh, your, your customers and ha how the heroes are coming in and going on quests. Really fun. I do have a video on that. And then an also really strong journaling game, I think, is Colossal, where you are taking a character and you are moving through a giant castle. And this castle has, has towers and areas with like its own atmosphere. This castle is huge. It's like, it's like a world castle. And this is a very neat game and it uses a deck of cards. I don't believe that the, the themed deck of cards is still available, but you can use a standard deck of cards um, and just draw a card and then you look up in the book, you look up on some tables to see what that card represents. And then you kind of figure out right by writing a story, what happens to your character and how your character interacts with the various um, things that they have encountered. It's a very light on the rules. Uh, your characters are very simple. They don't have a lot of stats, so you're not really using stats to determine how your character reacts. You are using creative writing to determine how your character reacts. And that is something that is common amongst all journaling games that I know of. It's they're more creative writing um, exercises than they are strictly gameplay. Okay, now let's take a quick detour into a relatively kind of new avenue of solo role playing. And those are uh, skirmish games with high, with a focus on narrative. And 
for those games, you could look at things like five leagues from the Borderlands. Uh, what is it? Five parsecs from home, the sci-fi version of this. Or uh, games maybe like Core Space or games like uh, Rangers of Shadow Deep. These are definitely on the complex side, but I could see these being really useful for people who are coming from a skirmish game background, maybe not an RPG background, maybe not a board game background, but, but they have been into skirmish miniatures games and they want to one, uh, play these games solo, which Five Leagues from the Borderland is entirely solo. So is uh, like Rangers of Shadow Deep and uh, Core Space. It was, uh, all of them can be played with multiple players, but I think they they, they thrive as, as uh, solo games. They are more complex. I mean, this game has a ton of rules and maybe even more rules than I am prepared to, 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 <laughs> to give it the time it needs for. Um, Five Leagues from the Borderlands is a very large sandbox game. A large part of these rules are all kinds of various tables that you are going to be rolling on to create your world to um, have different kinds of travel encounters as you are traveling around the land. You are required to create an overland map for this game. So this game has a lot going for it. It's definitely complex, but if you're coming from a skirmish background, you're probably used to the complexity. And so if you want to introduce a little more narrative into your skirmish games, something like this, I think would be pretty good to use. And this is also an all-in-one system. You really don't need anything else to play five leagues from the Borderlands or five parsecs from home. You don't need anything else to play these as a game, except for maybe some miniatures or something to use for terrain as some, some more um, some accessories that you might need. But you don't need any more tools or systems or rules to overlay on top of these games. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about some of the more indie style games that fit into a variety of these different categories. Okay, first up, let's take a look at 6x6 Tales. And 6x6 Tales is a very small, a very simplistic game. I have done a review for it on the channel. It's from uh, Jack D. And you can get that at Jack D Games. And I believe that it is uh, free. And this is a very basic kind of overland crawl, but it's not sandboxy. It's a little more scripted. I would put it uh, closer to something like Four Against Darkness, but it is um, more simple than Four Against Darkness. That's for sure. It's definitely on the simple side. And it is more of a structured play. So this is not a journaling game, even though you are writing. I would say it, it is a kind of a complex roll and write game. Uh, think of this as maybe a one step up from Yahtzee or maybe five steps up for, from something like Yahtzee, where you will be rolling dice. You will be looking up uh, different types of terrain that you will be moving into, and then you will be seeing what happens to your character on that spot. But this game definitely has a beginning, middle, and an end. So it's not a full sandbox style game where you have where the uh, options are limitless. You are playing from a beginning to an end, usually in a single setting. And then we can take a look at something like Ronin, which I just did a review for. And Ronin um, kind of strikes a balance between journaling and, and structured play. You can journal if you want, and you might get more out of the game if you journal. But it is also a self-contained system. It is simple. You are rolling dice. You are looking up things on charts. And then you are just kind of connecting the narrative dots in between encounters that your character has experienced. And then something that would be an all-in-one system that is a little bit more complex would be something like Fallen. And Fallen, you can get the, uh, the main core book. You can get the hill grab uh, city expansion and also from perplexing ruins is the campaign notebook now what's interesting about fallen is it is a self-contained system but when you buy the things from perplexing ruins you also get a whole bunch of different tools that you can use for other games for instance fallen comes with this incredible um, MacGuffin creator and Oracle that you can use to play to really turn just about any other RPG system into a solo game. You have your various questions here. You have your degrees of successes. You have your different ways to alter the scene, ways to shift the scene, the scene, a uh, random event focus, uh, different types of weather, different, a uh, uh, very simple chart for introducing a plot twist. A very quick way to uh, create an NPC. 
some general adventure sparks. If you don't know what to do next, you could roll on this chart here. And then also, if you're looking for something, uh, you can roll on this D66 chart to get a little picture and a word of something that might spark an idea in your imagination to help you progress your story. So Fallen is a system, but it is also comes with some really cool tools. And that is the same about this campaign notebook, which is a tool to use with Fallen. But it is also a tool that you could use for any number of games because it has different ways to generate your dungeons. It has a whole bunch of different loot charts that you can roll on. And it has um, wilderness encounters, dungeon encounters, settlement encounters, and then in all kinds of different ways to generate different things in your dungeons with NPCs. And so this campaign notebook can be used with Fallen and it can also be used as a tool in order to facilitate solo play in other games. I've done a big long video on the Perplexing Ruins package. It's not really a package, but on the per Perplexing Ruins uh, materials. So if you want more, check that out. But this is a great, these three things, if you were to purchase these three, three things together, you would have a lot of variety to play in a very cool setting with some interesting rules. Um, I don't think you can get the, the the physical materials anymore, but you can uh, you can buy them very cheaply on PDF or on HIO and then just have a one notebook for your fallen, your city setting and your campaign notebook. And then we have this game here, which I have reviewed, and I absolutely love this game, and that is Expedition to Skull Island. This is definitely a systems game. I would say that this is structured play because there are uh, very, like, it is very turn oriented, and it is also more of a system or a sandbox, and it's relatively simple. And this is a pretty simple hex crawl where you are going to be taking a crew of pirates. You are going to be exploring Skull Island, rolling up on charts to see what you encounter from one hex to the next. It's slightly scripted in that you are relying on the already generated prompts. You're not having to come up with things on your own, but it doesn't feel as scripted as something like a choose your own adventure. You still have some options and there are a ton of different ways to experience the game and no two games will ever really be the same from game to game. Okay, for the remainder of this video, we are going to be taking a look at a whole bunch of tools. So these are things that you can use to uh, turn non-solo games into solo games, uh, things like oracles we've talked about before. And these are things that can help facilitate your solo games to make them more fun, to help you come up with prompts, to help you come up with ideas, to help you come up with ways that you can push your story forward. Because that is one of the hardest things about solo role playing is when you are playing in an open world in a sandbox, you're using a system and you are using an oracle or you might ask a question and then you just don't know how to answer that question. You don't know how to progress your story because it's just you. You don't have other people to bounce narrative ideas off of like you would in a traditional uh, group setting with an RPG. So there are a lot of different tools available for the solo role player in order to help him or her facilitate the kind of play that they want to get into. Okay, so uh, first we're going to take a look at this tool here, which is Untold Encounters of the Random Kind from the folks at Loke Battlemats. Uh, this book is a new favorite of mine. It is indispensable. It is invaluable. It is worth its weight in gold, and it is a pretty heavy book. But this book I've done a full review on, so we won't retread that information too much. But this is a book that is full of random encounters grouped together with a town setting, a wilderness setting, and dungeon setting as well as a series of rules to generate adventures in each one of those. I cannot recommend this book enough. It is so well made, well written, and it just is overflowing with information for the solo role player. And it does help push you in directions to where if you come, if you become stuck in how to progress your story, this book can help you get dig yourself out of that trap. Especially if you combine it with the Loke Battle Mats uh, uh, books, because these you could easily just open up to a random battle mat, and that could spark all kinds of different uh, ideas for different adventures. 
And there are uh, wilderness books, and these wilderness books are more like outdoor environments. But uh, these used in conjunction with the book of random encounters, you could have an in and like a limitless number of of um, adventure ideas to create. I really do like the dungeon mats. I use these for a variety of different games. You can also buy these overlay um, little sticker things that you can put on in order to change the maps. Highly recommended. But sometimes I will just like sit down. I will open up a book to a random uh, page, and then I will open up the uh, random encounters table in that in, in the Loke Battle Mats book. And roll up some random encounters and just have a little one page solo adventure where you uh you know you just come up with an idea like you're st you're stuck in jail here and you need to get you need to get out uh, something simple like that but it can be a lot of fun and then there are also books for uh, various towns now these are a little more expensive but if you were just to buy you know one setting that you really liked and that book and then you would need a system because this isn't a system there are not rules for play but you could easily add in any of the free systems like um, basic fantasy role playing, which I believe you can just download all the rules for free. And you could use that with these to have a, a, just a limitless no amount of fun. All right, now let's talk about what is probably the most ubiquitous set of tools available to the solo role player. And that is, of course, the Table Fables books. These two books should be on every solo role player's table on every shelf these are also invaluable uh worth their weight times two in gold uh, <laughs> but i cannot uh, talk about these enough i've done videos on these before you've if you've watched any number of youtube channels that focus on solo role playing you will see these books from madeline hale and these are just all kinds of just random tables with a uh, uh, loot and adventures and quests and encounters mundane loot magical loot uh, towns cults npcs dungeons uh, wilderness encounters just all kinds of things everything that you would need uh, to access and easily accessible these are invaluable tools but i think they are also quite simple to use and let's talk about a similar book but one that is very complex to use it is a tool, but is far more complex. And I actually don't really like this book too much. And that is the Tome of Adventure Design. I know a lot of people swear by this book, but for me, it's just too much. It is, I find it quite difficult to use because of the way it is laid out and because there's just so much of it. Um, I greatly prefer the Lok book, The um, Un Untold Encounters of the Random Kind to this. I think this has more, and this is probably, if you're into more complex things, this is probably the book that you want to accomplish that same goal. But I find it a little cumbersome to use, and I just get overwhelmed when I open this up. I don't get inspired to play. I get overwhelmed. And I lose track of what I was trying to do and in the moment as I was looking through this book. I think uh, this might be a book that you could sit down with a week before you play and come up with some ideas using this book. But I would not recommend using this book during play. Let's talk about another uh, complex tool that I also am not a fan of. And I know a lot of people are. And that is the mythic and uh, the mythic system. This is for generating for uh, this is a GM system that you can add on to a game to turn just about any game into a, uh, a solo game. So no GM. What are you talking about, Willis? Yeah, that's right. So this has a very complex GM simulator in it. And I know a lot of people really like it, but I dislike it and I dislike it so much that when I was trying to get into solo role playing, and this was a few years ago, I kept uh, hearing that I, I kept getting recommended the Mythic book. And so I purchased Mythic and I did have a long history with RPGs, including some very complex ones. But um, moving into solo role playing was something new for me. So I decided to pick this up and it actually turned me off from solo role playing for a year or two because it was just, it was too much. The rules that you needed to use in Mythic just kept getting in the way of me having fun. 
And even going back to Mythic now with more experience, I still am not a fan of this system. I think it's kind of like using a crane to crush a fly. It just it it is it's it adds too much to something that can already be complex and I just don't appreciate it. But I know that other people really do like it and there are a lot of videos on how to use it. Now we can look at a more simple tool and that might be something like uh, Geek Gamers Wanderings, a gothic roll and read table. So this is a book that consists of a bunch of prompts from old public domain uh, gothic horror and supernatural uh, literature that you can use to uh, kind of to to um, facilitate your own ideas to help get yourself out of uh, out, out of uh, corners uh, narrative corners and it can help you uh, lead your character down interesting paths and I know that Deborah from Geek Gamers also has her new book out um, how to solo I think it's a how to be your own GM I can't remember exactly the name of the book I'm sorry I haven't purchased it yet, but I'm going to. And hopefully after I read it, I will get her on the channel for an interview. Okay, another uh, tool system that can help you with your sandbox games, and it is a little more complex. And so these I just recently looked at, and so I won't spend a lot of time, but uh, that is the Sandbox Creator and the Realm Fables book. So I have a whole uh, two-part video series on these books here talking all about how you could use these. And we are going to be diving deep into these soon. Uh, on the channel, I am going to be getting a very, very large hex mat that takes up my entire table. And we're actually, I'm actually going to create a world on camera uh, in which I will play a variety of different games. So I'm really looking forward to that. So you have the Sandbox Creator, you have the Realm Fables Volume 1, Volume 2, uh, the miscellany and then the uh, preformed settings volume one. Another very simple tool I would say is something like the Dungeon Alphabet and this is a fantastic book from Goodman Games, something that you can use to help facilitate any of your dungeon adventures and this book has a ton of great art to inspire you and it also has all kinds of different charts uh, that correspond to the letters of the alphabet. So for instance, A is for altars, R is for room, S is for statues, U is for undead, I is for inscriptions, K is for kobolds. And then you can turn to those sections and you can roll those dice in order to get prompts for different types of encounters, different kinds of puzzles you have to solve, different kinds of things your characters will have to do. Um, the writing in this book is inspirational, but I think the art is just as inspirational. And sometimes I will just pick up this book and flip through it in order to get some ideas is on how I should progress. So using charts, there are a lot of books like this with charts. They are very simple tools that you can use to help facilitate your solo role playing. And finally, perhaps, well, we're gonna go, we're gonna save the most simple thing for last, but another set of simple tools that you can use are various decks of cards that you can buy. Now, a lot of these I have already looked at on the channel. So again, we are not going to go into super detail. You can, uh, look at my my playlist for solo role playing but these are different decks of cards that can help you in your solo role playing so we have these decks of cards from the Steve Jackson games the fantasy trip labyrinth encounters just a deck of cards that you can use to have uh, different um, encounters in dungeons very very useful then they also have a deck of cards for outdoor encounters again super useful these aren't specifically made for the solo role player but they can easily be used for that and then we have these side quest decks and they have different environments such as dungeons, caves and ruins and fantasy, wilderness uh, encounters and political and urban fantasy. And these are really handy because you will get a map of your um, encounter area and then you will also get some prompt on the back which can help you come up with your adventure. So these can help create adventures and they can also help you get uh, out of uh, being stuck. Then we have some of these pixel cards, uh, curious effects. So these are different kinds of effects that your characters might come across. Or maybe a deck of dungeon, uh, a dungeon making deck, which helps you create a narrative dungeon. Um, this overland travel, I've used this a lot um, in, in my role playing games to come up with ideas for while my characters are exploring a wilderness. And then we have these encounter builder cards. I think there are four decks in this series. So we have ways to create locations with this deck. This deck can help augment your combat and make your combat more dynamic 
one thing I do recommend this deck because one thing that often suffers in solo role playing is combat is coming up with ways to make your combat dynamic. And you can use these prompts and these different twists and stuff in order to make your combat feel a little more exciting. And then we have your, your various oracles here. So you can use this deck as an oracle instead of a lookup chart for all of your yes or no, your different dice rolls, your different randomness and some details and some quest ideas. And then we also have a deck of traps and a deck of traps is also always super interesting because traps are always fun and easy. Traps are a fun, easy obstacle to create for your characters to overcome. And then we have these GM decks here. Um, these are just various Oracle decks that will have uh, your, your oracles here, your likely odds of yes and no, uh, different words that you can use, different symbols that you can use for different things. And then I have this deck of cards from the Story Master's Tale, a game that I do not like, but I use this as a kind of a divination deck just to uh, thumb through at random and look at pictures to come up with ideas. And that is another uh, thing that you can use as tools are all of your things from all of the various board games that you own. If you own a lot of board games, you have a lot of tools at your disposal. So if you own a lot of board games or just a few board games, you already have a bunch of tools at your disposal that you can use to facilitate and to uh, help create your solo games. There are also small little card games like The Quiet Year, and these can help you with uh, coming up with ideas, coming up, generating uh, maps, generating different characters to role play with. Uh, these are just a few more of the pixel loot. So this is a bunch of loot in pixel form. And then these two decks we've also taken a look at, and these are, while specifically not made for solo role playing, uh, these are ways that you, different decks of cards that you can use to come up with uh, different scenarios. And finally, finally, perhaps the most simple tool that you can use to facilitate role, uh, role playing. Actually, there are two, and one we've already looked at, and the other we have not, and that are dice and a deck of cards. You can easily come up with charts. You can make a D6 chart and you can roll a D6 and have a random encounter with that D6 chart. You can have a D6 uh, chart of words and roll on that. All kinds of dice can be used for different things. You can create dungeons by dropping dice on a piece of paper and then looking up things on charts. And these would be different rooms with different kinds of connectors. Uh, you can use dice to keep track of things. Um, dice are an invaluable tool in the tool belt of a solo role player. And then finally, we've already looked at that, but a, a simple deck of cards can do a lot, can do mad, can create magical encounters with a standard deck of cards. But when you start getting into these more thematic decks of cards, you also have, uh, things like art that can trigger ideas. And these have little, little pictures of dungeon room. So you could create an entire adventure just using this deck of bestiary playing cards that are available on drive through RPG. But yeah, that's, that's about it. I hope you guys liked this really deep dive into a beginner's guide of role of solo role playing. And again, we have our, our competing ideas. So we have scripted games, which are low effort, light on role playing. At the opposite end of that spectrum, we have sandbox games, which take more effort, but they allow for more role playing. And then we have things that are complete systems. These are all in one games where you only need one book and maybe some dice and some pieces of paper in order to play an entire game. You need nothing else. It's a complete system. And then on the opposite end of that spectrum, we have tools. And these are things or overlays to help facilitate solo play. Different types of tools that can make a non-solo game into a solo game. And then we have things that are very simple, very easy to get into, that take a lot, don't, don't take a lot of effort. And of course, opposite of that would be things that are more complex, things that take a lot of work. And then we also have games that are like journaling games, which are really just creative writing exercises, as opposed to things that are more structured play, more board game like. And I think the key to finding, you know, what you, what you want is to look at these various words, these various categories and find where you fit. Where is your sweet spot in between these? 
which ones of these do you like? Which ones of these do you like? And then you find the game that incorporates all of those elements that you like. You can find you know, where you fit in between these opposites. And um, there's, there's a game for every connection. There's a game for every space. It just takes a little bit of time, a little bit of effort to find that game. And so hopefully channels like mine or Geek Gamers or Solo RPG Guy or Stone Axe Gaming Table or Article, um, Artichoke Dip you know, there's a bunch of channels out there that can help you there. Uh, the Dungeon Dive Facebook group can help, or you can just go to itch.io and start plugging in keywords and and discovering things that you might like on your own. But knowing knowing the kinds of games, knowing the kinds of options that are out there, I think will really help you dial into the kind of game that you want to play. Sorry, right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this very long video and we will talk to you later. Bye bye.